I know. I I've been there. I I've got the t-shirt. You've done it again. You've fallen into the same sin again and again and again. And you've made vows to God. You've, you've fasted. You've prayed. You've said, I I'm not going to do this sin again. And you've fallen again today into this same sin. And you're thinking, how can God forgive me? How can I be forgiven from this sin that I have committed? Have I sinned away my salvation? Is that it? Am I like Esau now? No place for repentance. And let's be honest, let's be really honest right now. You don't even want to watch this video. The last thing your flesh wants to do is watch a video. You want to think about anything but God because you feel so guilty, you feel so dirty. But I'm going to beg you, I'm going to plead with you right now. Please watch all of this video because I want to help you. I want to help you get through this pain. And I believe that I'm here today to tell you one thing and that is this. God still loves you. Yes, you've sinned. Yes, you've messed up. But God still loves you. Let me show it to you. If you've got a Bible, turn to Hosea chapter 11. And for those of you who don't know, the book of Hosea is all about this man, Hosea, who was asked to marry a prostitute called Gomar. And Gomar was going to be unfaithful. She was definitely going to cheat on Hosea. And Hosea was asked to marry her anyway, to show a picture of how Israel, of how God's people were unfaithful to God. And then in these verses, God is saying, even though you've sinned, even though you've messed up, even though you've ran away from me and rebelled, I still love you. Listen to this, Hosea chapter 11 verse 8 says, How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboiahim? And Adma and Zeboiahim were towns inside of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and we know what happened there, don't we? God, in other words, is saying, I can't rain fire and brimstone on you. I can't send you to hell. I love you too much. I can't punish you. I care about you this much. Do me a favour, every single one of you, I want you to use your imagination. Some of you, it might not be hard to do, but, but you're, you're a mother, you're a father. And... Here we are, you've got a son and a daughter, and you remember them when they were a, a child in the womb, you saw the scan, you, you loved them to pieces, as they grew up, you fed them, you read bedtime stories to them, you educated them, you did everything, you loved them to pieces. But then when they got to 17, 18, 19 years old, they rebelled against you. They began swearing, they began getting angry, they, they were aggressive with you, they had parties, they went out with different people, sleeping around, they did wicked, horrible things. And you said, I can't take this anymore. You're breaking my heart too much. I'm sorry, you're going to have to move out. You can't live with me anymore. And there you are, you've got your child uh, and they have a bag full of clothes and they walk to the front door. And just as they, they, they put their key into the front door, they turn round and they look at you. And then suddenly the heart of God, the, the God-given conscience which dwells within us all, cries out, how can I give you up? And you hold your son in the arms and you wrap your arms around your son or daughter and say, I can't give you up, I love you too much. And that is how God sees you, believer. At your very core, in your very epicenter, you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You were bought with a price and God has loved you with an everlasting love. You were chosen since the foundation of the earth and he loves you to pieces. Even though you've rebelled, even though you've done these wicked things, he loves you because you are cleansed, you are forgiven and he will not give you up. You might have lost the joy of your salvation, but you you will not lose your salvation itself. God still loves you. There was a young man and a pastor and they were walking along a beach. And the young man says, I've made a mess of life. I I've sinned and I've wandered so much from God in my life. I've, I've ruined it. I've just lived in sin. I've not lived like a Christian. In fact, pastor, look at, look at these footsteps in the sand. You see how they're all crooked? You see how they wander everywhere and, and there's no straight line? That's me. I've been prone to wander all my life. And as he's speaking, suddenly, whoosh, a wave comes in and washes away all of the footprints. And then the pastor turns and looks at the young man and says, Yes, but remember this young man, the blood of Jesus Christ washes away all of your sins. So what do you need to do now? You need to call out to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry I've messed up again. 
And then you need to remember that in the Bible it teaches this, every day is a new page and tomorrow will be a new page. Today, yes, you failed God, but tomorrow is a new page. Rest in the love of God and remember, even though your hands might be covered in pus, in muck, in filth, you're filthy. But the Lord God, in his loving compassion, will still wrap his arms around you, even though you're unclean. You are loved by God. He loves you dearly. Fast, pray, repent of this sin, but don't hide from God, whatever you do.